Apostle Paul Odola, the founder of Paul Odola Ministries International and the senior pastor of Dominion Power Assembly International Incorporated. A seasoned and dynamic preacher with uncommon insight into scriptures. Can I talk to somebody here? I'd like to announce to you that life does not take excuses. Life does not take failure. Life does not celebrate emptiness. Whatever it is that has made your life a mockery, God will answer you. He is graced with the mandate to bring men into absolute dominion in all ramifications, with the commission of restoring the dignity of humanity through the preaching of the word of truth. Ladies and gentlemen, as our faces differ, so does our next level. He is a regular speaker at Christian conferences, seminars, and crusades. He is a publisher of several inspirational and motivational journals. Whatever condition you are in that is not of God expires tonight. Apostle Paul Odola. Bring out your Bible, everybody. Say, This is my Bible. Say it like you mean it. Say, This is my Bible. I believe it's the Word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can. I must have what it says I will. And so bless me, O oh God. If you believe that, say amen. amen. I need you to look at the book of Genesis, if you can. Genesis, everybody. Genesis chapter number 3, and you will see Easter in another light. Genesis chapter number 3. I will be reading verse 7 to 11. Then we read verse 21. And I pray that God bless you. If you're there, say amen. amen. Genesis chapter number 3 verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sealed thick leaves. This is actually my emphasis. And please read with me if you can. Let's go from verse one, uh, 7 again. One to go, everybody. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made for themselves apple. On the line, they knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves to make for themselves apple. Verse number eight, quickly, let me run through it now. Verse number eight. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord uh, God among the three sons of the gardens. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? Please, I need you to note this. The emphasis is mine. God wasn't looking for them to condemn them. God was looking for them to help them. God does not condemn God redeems. Verse number 10. And he said, I heard the voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Please, I need you to still note that with the apron with which they sealed themselves with, they were still naked. They were still naked. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Are you there? Verse number 11, quickly. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the three which I commanded thee thou shalt not eat? Verse number 21. Let me quickly. Everybody want to go now read this. And unto Adam. Please read with me verse 21 everybody. And unto. I want to hear your voice again. And unto Adam also and to his wife. Did the Lord make coats of skin? And clothed them. Please stay there. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21 is the summary of Easter. And the Lord made coats of skin and clothed them. It is practically impossible to have the skin of an animal without killing the animal. Man's attempt to clothe himself was not sufficient enough with all the clothings he was still naked i need to emphasize this so that when i start preaching you can relate and you can connect man with all his abilities and skills couldn't clothe himself god needed to clothe 
clothed men because no matter how much you clothe yourself you will still be naked until God clothes you and so God killed an animal spilled the blood to clothe man the reason for Jesus death Jesus was God's sacrificial lamp to clothe the nakedness of man and so tonight whatever has brought you ridicule and shame embarrassment and disgrace by the significance of Easter God will clothe you that amen can be better God will clothe you that amen can be better God will clothe you so in summary Easter is the extension of supernatural help to man's natural situation look at this again Luke chapter number 4 verse 25 let me do all the reading and believe God to give you an understanding Luke chapter 4 verse number 25 thank you spirit of God I feel your anointing Luke chapter 4 verse number 25 are you there with me but I tell you of a truth many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah many widows when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land, please read with me. But unto none was Elias sent, save unto Zarephath, a city of Sidon, and unto a woman that was a widow. Please. And many lepers, I needed to hear the emphasis many widows, many lepers, were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was clean, save Naaman the Syrian. And, I'm, I'm Joshua, and all they were in synagogue when they had these things they were filled with wrath finally Psalm 46 verse 1 with my readings I'm almost done with my preaching I'm telling you Psalm 46 verse 1 I love this please read with me everybody want to go everybody God is our refuge and strength a very absent help in times of trouble. Is that what your Bible said? A very what? Must there be a very before the present is to emphasize the help that is available. God, let's take it for the last time. One to go, everybody. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in times of trouble. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, I stand like I have always stood, and I ask that you grant me the tongue of the wise and the lips of the prudent that I may declare the immortality of your counsel. As I preach in this few minutes, let the sick be healed, let the oppressed be delivered, and the captive be liberated. I take authority over every contrary spirit and wandering mind. I bring to the captivity of your word. As I preach the word of life, let the sick be healed, let the oppressed be delivered let the captive be liberated give us testimonies to your glory in Jesus precious name we pray and everybody say amen, amen. and everybody say amen, amen. please I, I need you if you intend to title the message connecting to the help of God say it again connecting to the help of God I would have loved to put it this way because of certain emphasis that I will be making appropriating the help of God say it again appropriating the help of God ladies and gentlemen can I say this like I began to share with us from the book of Genesis chapter number 3 like we read the purpose for which God came into the garden was to help man the purpose for which God came into the garden was to help man's attempt to clothe his own nakedness. When man fell short of the laws and the instruction of God by eating the forbidden fruit, and man discovered that he was naked. The Bible said they discovered that they were naked. That word naked means man became vulnerable to the tribulations of life. Man became susceptible susceptible to satanic deception and aggression man became vulnerable to another man's wickedness man was practically naked and so in an attempt to cover his nakedness 
the bible said adam and eve made attempt by leaves and then by by shrubs and created an apron ladies and gentlemen at the beginning of their attempt to clothe their nakedness they felt that they were clothed but because of the material used to clothe their nakedness when the sun rises certainly the wheel the leaf will grow dry and fall off am i talking to somebody here oh stay with me you will be blessed in an attempt to clothe themselves they pluck leaves you know leaves at the beginning looks very fresh and so when you wrap it in your neck on your nakedness it appears you are clothed when the leaf will get dry and fall off you may not be aware and may god help you that you are not in a public place so ladies and gentlemen can i say this man's are to help himself has always fall short of man's expectation man's attempt to cover man's nakedness has not always worked and so when god saw that man cannot help himself man cannot clothe himself man cannot help himself god in his infinite mercy decided to provide for man a help god killed an animal and tore the skin to cover the nakedness of man my brother can i say this to you if god does not cover your nakedness friends you are still naked if god does not help you you are still helpless if god does not help you you are still vulnerable if god does not help you you are still susceptible and so the summary of easter is god providing help for a man Somebody's out here. Somebody's out here. Somebody's out here, here, here. But ladies and gentlemen, it is one thing to understand that God has provided help. It is another thing to be able to appropriate the help of God. And that is where I want to emphasize this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not enough that Jesus died. It will be better if you know what it takes to appropriate the benefit of his suffering the benefit of his death and the benefit of his resurrection it is not enough that he resurrected it will be better if you have an understanding on how to connect and appropriate the benefit of his resurrection so that you are not left with celebration without manifestation so that you are not left with the observation of tradition without testimony so that you are not left with a custom without impact there are many of you that we live today celebrating easter you pump champagne looking glamorously dressed you may visit relation after today but the question i want to ask you is the help that easter brought are you able to appropriate are you able to connect are you able to enjoy because that will make a whole lot of difference it is not enough that he died it is not enough that he resurrected it will be better if you understand how to connect and to appropriate i pray for somebody here attack to this service you will see the help of god you will experience the help of god if you have the one i'm talking about let me hear that amen like a thunder say i hear say i hear say i hear here sit down i was talking to pastors in a recent pastors conference in my country and i made a profound statement and i said to them what it was a topic on evangelism and i said to them one of the reasons why we need to be passionate about sinners and to get them saved is because there are no actually sinners there are saved men who have not acknowledged their salvation there is no sinner anywhere go and read your bible jesus came to take away the sins of the world if he came then he took somebody said here yeah. he took and if he had taken and you think there is a sinner there is none only a man who has not acknowledged that his sins have been taken that is why when you see them in their drunkenness don't criticize them help them acknowledge if you see them as prostitutes don't criticize them help them to acknowledge when you see them as thieves and robbers don't criticize them help them to acknowledge 
That is why God has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And many of you have driven people from church because of your condemnation. Friends, it is time to reconcile. Somebody say, I hear. I wish I'm talking to somebody. Somebody say, I hear. So stay with me. So it is not enough that he died. It's important you are able to appropriate. It is not enough that Jesus took the sins of the world. It will be important for sinners to appropriate the salvation that is provided. And that is the cross of my message this morning. The Bible speaking said in the book of Luke chapter number 4 verse number 25 where we read that there were many widows in Israel that unto none was Elisha sent. Meaning Elisha was available as a help. But no many widows could connect to that help except one widow. Elisha was available as a healing grace. But not too many lepers could connect to the help except Naaman the Syrian. So it goes to say that it is possible for help to be available and you are unable to connect because of certain lacks in your understanding Jesus resurrected he died but it is possible that the help that God intended that you experience by the coming of Jesus you will probably die without experience it there are many widows only one widow really was it because all the widows couldn't be helped was it because all the widows couldn't enjoy supernatural provision no sir God was able and capable and available to provide for all the widows by the presence of Elisha but because the widows didn't know how to connect to the help they died widows in penury there were many lepers in the days of Elisha and Elisha had enough anointing for their healing but they still died lepers because they were able to unable to appropriate and connect to the healing anointing available in Elisha let me say gentlemen except Naaman Naaman came from Syria and collected the help connected supernatural healing let me say gentlemen listen to this my intention today is to open your eyes to see how you can appropriate the benefit of Easter and connect to the help that God has provided by sending Jesus and my friend if you connect to the help of God you should please understand that when God help you you are helped every man in the Bible is a product of the help of God I don't know how you read your Bible best friends when I read my Bible one thing comes to my mind that the men and the women that we read about they are men that the God of heaven my God and your God our father has helped the bible is not a storybook it's the summary of men and women that god has helped if you talk about abraham he's a man god helped from childlessness into the fathers of many nations when you talk about a woman hannah is a woman god helped in a barrenness when you talk about david he's a young boy that god helped from the forest and the wilderness and brought him to the palace even though he wasn't born as a king ladies and gentlemen every time you read the bible you see the help of God at work. I prayed for somebody here. On that the sound of my voice, I don't know where you need the help of God, but after today, help will be your portion. The help of God will be your portion. I wish I'm talking to somebody. The help of God will be your portion. If you believe that, let me hear that amen like a thunder. Lift up your right hand and say, Oh God, help me. I can hear you say, Oh God help me if you believe that say amen. amen so i'm talking about the help of god that easter made available to us it is not enough that it's available it's important that you are able to appropriate a scripture i read 10 years ago changed my life and i just re-echoed it psalm 46 verse number one the lord is present help very present but how many of you have gone through situations and have gone through circumstances and have gone through conditions and it appears the Lord is absent he's present he's not just present he is very present help and if the Lord is truly present how comes you are still sick and if the Lord is truly present how comes you are still afflicted if the Lord is a present helper, how comes devils are still accompanying you? 
How come you are still possessed with spirits? The Lord is a present help, a very present help in times of trouble. If the Lord is present, how comes He appears to be absent in your life? How comes? How comes he appears to be absent in your marriage? How comes he appears to be absent in your circumstances and your situation? Sir, you didn't call him. He has always been around, willing to help. It changed my life. I was in a hurry to run out of Gombe State when churches were being burnt and pastors were being killed. I was scared for my family. And every time I gather my faith, my wife will remind me that their faith is not as strong as my own. I might tell somebody here that she wouldn't want to be in the house and because I travel around and then hand the children will be in a situation they can't help themselves. My wife wanted us to relocate and then we have a house in America. She wanted us to move and then she said every now and then she was suggesting and one day in my depression and despair I was praying and I heard I am a very present help in times of trouble it is not about your condition it is not about your location it is not about your situation it doesn't matter america nigeria it doesn't matter ghana togo the lord is a present help hear me after this morning service you will feel the help of god i can hear you you will feel the help of god i can hear you you will feel the help of god I can hear you. You will feel the help of God. If your amen is the loudest, let me hear it like a believer. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. Hear, hear. Lift up your right hand. Say, Oh God, help me now. If you believe that, say, Amen. Sit down and hear this as I make an attempt to close. Many of you are like Adam and Eve. All your life you have been running from pillar to post trying to help yourself. You have gotten leave thinking they covered your nakedness. You have gotten education thinking it will cover your nakedness. In some cases you have even gotten money thinking it will cover your nakedness. In some cases you have found for yourself association and companies thinking it will cover your nakedness. But can I say this to you except the Lord help you you are helpless you know there are many people who think they don't need the help of God probably because of their connections you know my uncle is that my father is that ladies and gentlemen can I say this to you position has never been known to help any man it may not have happened in your country but it happened in my own country we are one of the most qualified candidates with an international connection one election and couldn't be sworn in he could not he was boasting he said america is my friend britain is my friend abiola had friends across the world but friends on the day he needed this connection to come through for him there is a german he wrote and died in the prison america called he was still in prison britain sanctioned he was still in prison france reacted he was still in prison ladies and gentlemen the connection you have shown for yourself as an apron will fail you when you least expect it will that is why the bible said Rabushata, put not your trust in a man for they that put their trust in a man they shall be like the heat in the desert they will never see when good call it thank god for the gift of men but there is a german look up to god he chooses which men to help you Dr. Amo, I have never been disappointed in my life. And when I say this, people get surprised. You know why? I have never trusted any man. I believe men, of course. I am faithful in relationship, but my trust is only in God. So that when you say no, I am not disappointed and there is no bitterness. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh no, I am not disappointed. Because until the Lord empowers you to help, you can't, you aren't going to help nobody. Am I talking to somebody here? No wonder the Bible says, they that some put, Moshe, they that put their trust in a man shall be disappointed. David understood when he said, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we, we shall put our trust in the name of the Lord our God. Because any other source of help shall fail. But 
for us we shall stand somebody shout yes Every time I talk about this particular testimony, it reminds me of my friend, my, be- my best friend, my childhood friend. We grew up together. And when I was getting married, oh my goodness, he was everywhere, doing everything. And then I, 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 I told myself I was going to surprise him on his own wedding. I wanted to pay him back in his own coin for good. And so when he told us about his wedding, I decided to put a committee of our friends which, so that we can surprise him. And then, you know, no matter how you people gather and agree in secret somebody's mouth will be leaking we told ourselves nobody should mention it to him let's surprise him on that day with gifts with money let him see color and glamour but friends some people's mouth is like toilet it's always open <laughs> one of our friends went and told him he said you'll be surprised on your wedding day don't tell them I told you Apostle Paul Odola is putting something together and then he called me he said I learned what you guys are trying to do but don't bother ah, don't bother who told you he said that is not the issue but don't bother about what you are trying to do my uncle said from the pin to everything that will be needed in the wedding he will take care of it and when he mentioned this uncle is one of the most prominent men in Nigeria very substantial and rich he humbled us by the uncle's promises my uncle said all the suit will be bought all of us that were going to be best men our measurement were taken we were our our clothes were to be imported from London shoes from America tie from Paris am I talking to anybody here the wedding was the planning was too sh- and guess what ladies and gentlemen when you fly aircraft in Nigeria sometimes you pray your last prayer <laughs> there was a plane crash of Dana that killed the uncle a month plus to the wedding we were all devastated we didn't know what devastation meant until we saw him <laughs> refused to be consoled. We gathered our friends and committee to go and console him. He was weeping. You know why? That was when I knew the meaning of weeping more than the bereaved. This man's children were still come entertaining uh, visitors. But this our friend who is jo- he's not his father, he's his uncle. He was crying all over the place. Wah, woo, eh, wah, woo. So I went to him. I said, you are crying more than the man's children. What is your problem? He said to me, Odola, lean on my shoulder. He said, Odola, I am not crying about my uncle's death. I'm crying about the death of my wedding. (laughs) Somebody shout hallelujah. When you put your trust in men, their incapacitation brings your disability. When you put your trust in men, their disposition affects your position. It affects your provision. So many of you sometimes think you don't need God's help because of one man somewhere. My friend, they are like an apron from a tree. They will wither when you least expect them. Somebody said to me, Pastor, I don't need the help of God. I've got money. I'm a brother. There is a book I read early in my life. The, the, the life of the first 100 rich men in America. I was scared to death. 80% of them died by committing suicide. If money brings happiness and fulfillment without God, rich men who commit suicide. Money answereth all things, but doeth not all things. Money can make the... Clap. What are you doing? Say I hear. Say I hear. Say I hear, hear, hear. Am I talking to somebody here? Money will make the best of doctor answer you from any part of the world. It may not cure your sickness. Doctor, money can buy you the best of bed, but may not give you sleep. Money can cook for you the most balance of diet. But my brother, ah, the diet could be a poison because the more balanced your diet, the more imbalance of health. <laughs> There are diseases only rich men can suffer them. Are you not aware? The problem is in the food. <laughs> Say I hear. Say I hear. Say I hear. I hear. I hear. Ladies and gentlemen, you can buy the best of car, but only God guarantees safety. You can live in a house, only God. You can buy a house, only God create a home. You can have the best of wedding, only God gives a good marriage. Money answereth all things, but doeth not all things. 
Say I hear. Say I hear. Say I hear. I hear. I hear. Makabu sapali takai. So everything known to associate with man has limitation. Every and I mean everything. Whether it's human connection or human provision, even human skill. You know, sometimes somebody says, "I don't need God. I am able." And when you tell them about Jesus, they say, "Leave me. It's my life. How can it be your life?" I say this with due respect, and I'm still pained in my heart that one of the brightest stars of Ghana died such a reckless and careless death. Am I talking to somebody here? I don't intend to reopen your wound, but ladies and gentlemen, in her prime, you will think she's far from death. Your skill is nothing where God is not concerned. You know who I'm talking about. I don't intend to mention names. Her barrier was just concluded. Ladies and gentlemen, God is the only one that can help you. On the day death came calling her skill, her singing skill and dancing talent could not help. Friends, even Peter knew that skill can fail. He told all night. Only God knew whether he was waiting for that cash to pay his coffees. He had been a fisherman all his life, feeding in the night and catching fish. Friends, whatever is not of God has its time of expiration. Your skill will expire. Am I talking to somebody? So, ladies and gentlemen, don't boast in your connection, don't boast in your provision, don't boast in your skill. Life is a mystery. The battle is not to the strong, the race is not to the swift, bread is not to the wise. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time and chance that happened to them all. A mighty man is not saved by his might, neither a king by the multitude of his army. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not of him that will it it is not of him that run it it is of the lord that showeth mercy it is not by might it is not by power if god does not cover you you are uncovered if god does not help you you are helpless if god does not lift you you are hanging say i hear say i hear there is a gentleman lifting and hanging a boat above the floor but if you are not lift, if you are not, <laughs> if you are not lifted by God, the weight of your hanging will kill you there. Some men that you think drive good cars, live in wonderful houses, you admire them. They are not lifted; they are hanging. The pressure they are under. Apostle, I flew with one man. I almost jumped out of the window. If the window was adjustable on flight, I would have taken off. Why should they allow that kind of a man enter a plane? The man was a was a mobile toilet. I don't know what kind of medical surgery was that. They gave him a tube that he hid in his abada. You know what they call abada? That big not cloth. He had something there. They order, oh Jesus. Unfortunately for me, both of us were sitting on the same business class. I called the waitress. I said, I want to go back to economy. <laughs> I'm going to talk to somebody here. One of the rich men in Gombe. But there is a gentleman, that kind of his surgical operation, his entire waist was going into one container. If God does not help you, you will die of the affliction that afflicts men. If the Lord does not help you, you will be vulnerable to human aggression. If the Lord does not help you, you will be susceptible to demonic wickedness. That is why you need the help of God. Friends, you can't help yourself. You need God. Appropriate and connect to the help that Easter has brought. Listen to this. I stand here by the power of the word I preach to every one of you hearing me right now. Help us come for you. I can hear you. Help us come for you. I wish I'm talking to somebody. Help us come for you. In your family, you will see the help of God. Somebody help me here. In your business, you will see the help of God. In your career, you will see the help of God. If you're the one I'm talking about, let me hear that amen like a thunder. Lift up your right hand. Say, oh God, help me. If you believe that, say, Amen. Makabosha, slap your neighbor. Say, Help is coming. Start another. Say, Help is coming. The Lord is a present help. But when you don't know how to connect and appropriate the help, it appears the Lord is absent. 
it appears. Please be seated. It appears the Lord is absent. A woman praying so fervently in a church overboarding the pastor with a language. Lord, are you still on the throne? Lord, where are you? Lord, are you still on the throne? The pastor got tired of the prayer and came out. Did you overthrow him? Can't you pray a better prayer? <laughs> I'm not talking to somebody here. Because many of you pray such kind of prayers. Lord, where are you? Lord, where are you? How can you be there looking at me? Lord, where are you? How can you be watching me go through this situation? Shut up. The Lord is a present help. It's your inability to appropriate and connect that has left you in deprivation. Are they hearing me? Are they hearing me? The Lord is a present help. So when you died from an accident, it's not because the Lord couldn't protect safety. It's not because the Lord couldn't guarantee safe journey. You didn't know how to connect to the help that is available. When you die sick, or you are carrying diseases and infirmity about, it's not because the Lord cannot heal. It is your inability to connect to the divine health available that has left you sick. Ladies and gentlemen, that you are unmarried. Friends, I, I make no light of what you know but the reason why certain things haven't fallen in place is your inability to connect because God is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above whatever you ask or think according to the power that is at work I speak to 100 of you before this conference will be over you will testify of the hell you will testify of the hell you will testify of the hell let me hear that amen like a thunder Say I hear. Say I hear. Lift up your right hand. Say, Oh God, help me now. Say it again. Say, Oh God, help me now. That should be your prayer as I bring this preaching to a conclusion. How comes Elisha was there and I was dying in penury and scarcity as a widow? How comes? How comes Elisha was available and I was leprous? Can I say this as I make an attempt to close? Ladies and gentlemen, my aunt Abrochapai, it is important you know that God is only moved by your understanding of his principle, not by the conditions of your persons. Because sometimes many of you pray your condition. God, can't you see me? All my mates have children. Sir, do you really have a mate? <laughs> You are praying your condition. Lord, can't you see? We got married the same time. We all grew up and graduated. Lord, can't you see? Sir, God is not moved by comparison. Neither is he moved by your competition. Stop praying your condition. He is not. If God is moved by condition, sir, all the lepers would have been healed. Their condition was lepers. I like the way you are clapping, sir. Somebody say, I hear you think he was not moved by those lepers they were lepers their condition was was obvious their condition was apparent enough for divine intervention but god is not moved by condition if you like keep lifting the lepers finger jehovah you are seeing it <laughs> man of god a leper in gombe state a leper leprous man was tired of begging and he said god kill me kill me i want to die i'm tired of begging and as he sat under a tree unfortunately for him the northern wind blew the tree ba, 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 ba. he woke up he said ah god so you can answer prayer quickly yes. <laughs> i've been praying for help since you didn't answer now that i say you should kill me <laughs> <laughs> somebody's out here somebody's out here god is not moved by your condition if it's moved by condition, every leprous leper would have been healed. So don't be deceived. It is what you know that changes conditions. It is what you appropriate that changes situations. God is not moved by your situation. If he was moved by your situation, he would have helped all the widows with our prayers. Their situation was precarious. Their husband had died and probably left them with children that they were struggling to feed. Isn't God compassionate? He is. See, isn't he seeing those widows? Why must he help one out of all the widows? Sir, he is not moved by situations. 
No, sir. <laughs> so don't pray your situations, don't pray your conditions. And I will shock you with this. It's amazing to discover that both the leper that was healed, Naaman, and the widow that was helped were not Israelites. And all the lepers that were not healed, and the widows that were not helped were all in Jerusalem. God is not moved by location. Pastor Amo can be your pastor and people are getting blessed and you will be here regardless how early you come and how late you close. If you don't appropriate and if you don't connect, you will be here and be hearing others' testimony and you'll be suffering a test. Every day you'll be asking, when will I testify? When will I testify? My brother, it is in connecting and appropriating that help becomes a reality. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, I can proudly say to you today, I am a product of the help of God. People don't understand my prosperity, even me, I can't explain it. People don't understand my favor, even me, I can't explain it. People don't understand what I'm doing in Northeastern Nigeria among Muslims, and yet I'm prospering and succeeding and enforcing the kingdom, even me, I can't explain it. Ladies and gentlemen, and all over the world, I have not broken down one day by stress, yet I can't even explain it. But one thing I know, I am a product of supernatural help. And ladies and gentlemen, I have come today, that help will locate your life. Who am I talking to? That help will locate your life. Wherever you are seated, under the sound of my verse, help is coming for you. Help is coming for you. If your amen is louder, let me hear like a thunder. Say I hear. Say I hear. Say I hear. Here. And so everywhere I have gone around the world, I bring the help of God to bear on human situations, conditions, and locations by the power of God. I may not be preaching to everybody here, but ladies and gentlemen, may this Easter be an Easter that help will take you from where you are to where you want to be. I wish I can have a better amen here. Lift up your right hand and say, Oh God, help me now. If you believe that, say amen. Sit down and hear this kapota shipa lita kadosa as I close. Friends, in connecting and appropriating help, please look at what Jesus said. In the book of Luke chapter 4, I'm not blessing anybody here. If I'm talking to you, say I hear. If I'm talking to you, say I hear. Say I hear, 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 hear. Slap your neighbor, say he's talking to you. <laughs> I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Ladies and gentlemen, in connecting and appropriating help, you must appreciate what Jesus said. Thank you, Jesus. He said a prophet is without honor in his own country. And he said that properly. And then he said that out of experience. Because even Jesus had gone to places to help their perception didn't allow them to connect. So, number one, it is practically impossible to connect and appropriate help without perception. Perception is a spiritual awareness that permits the flow of divinity in your direction for the purpose of the manifestation of your required expectation. Perception. Perception is a requirement. Without perception, you will never see help. Help will be passing you and you will be stranded. It's perception that allows you to know help when you see it. It's perception that allows you to connect to help. Ladies and gentlemen, we walk not by sight. If truly we don't walk by sight, by what do we walk? Perception. Faith is the perception of the invincible, bringing it into a physical realm. We can see God. We can touch God. We believe he exists. How? By perception. Jesus went to his own country. He had done miracles everywhere. He felt, okay, let me go to my nativity. Let them feel my power. Let them feel my grace. I want to heal their sick. I want to raise their dead. I want to clean their lepers. As he arrived Nazareth, their perception incapacitated the flow of divinity. Is it not the capital song? Ha, the last time I saw this man, when has he become a prophet? He was the one that did my broken chair in his father's capital Ah, this man.
man is a man of God? Are his brothers and sisters not among us? Check the scriptures. He could not. He couldn't heal their sick. He couldn't raise their dead because their perception was not in place. Every man that has received help, received help and divine intervention on the frequency of perception. Your problem is that you are too educated. It's a big problem. Everything you analyze until you paralyze. I might talk to somebody here. And when you went to the university, they taught you the ways of men. How the ways of men work physically, chemistry like. How the ways of men work, work medically. How the ways of men work economically. And ladies and gentlemen, his ways are not our ways. So when you come into God operating his ways, you appear like a fool, but in your foolishness, the power of God is made manifest. Somebody shout hallelujah. I think I'm preaching really good here. That is why to onlookers or pitting divine principle, you appear very foolish. They may criticize you because they don't understand the process. But friends, if you maintain the process, they can't doubt your product. They may criticize the process. They don't understand why you come to church almost every day when you should be in your business. They don't understand why you take certain percentage in the name of a tithe. They don't understand why in some cases you empty your account. They don't understand. But there is a German, the ways of God are not our ways. If our gospel be hidden, it's hidden unto them whom the God of this world has blinded their eyes. In their wisdom, gathering is increasing. In our wisdom, Wisdom scattering is increasing. There is he that gathereth and tend to poverty. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. Somebody shout, Yes! So you are too wise to be helped. You are too wise. Solomon advised, he said, Don't be wise in your eyes. That is why you are where you have been. You could have been better than this. You are too wise. You are too wise to be helped. That is why you are struggling. You are too wise. Don't be wise in your eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, if God says you should do it, it may not make sense. God doesn't come to make sense. He came to make fit. Nothing makes sense when God is at work. I like the way you are clapping. Nothing makes sense when God is at work. Keep your perception. Nothing makes sense. If it makes sense, a widow won't be pregnant. A, 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 a virgin won't be pregnant. Does that make sense? How does that make sense for an iron to swim? Does that make sense? How does it make sense for the Red Sea to be parted? Does that make sense? How does it make sense for a man's hand on the mountain to determine victory in the valley? Does that make sense? How does it make sense when mortal men walk through fire and they are not burnt? Does that make sense? Ladies and gentlemen, if your miracle must be outstanding, keep your senses away. Say perception. Say perception. A prophet is without honor. Because where there's no perception, you won't know how to accord honor to what honor is due. You don't know that the 10% is not even your own. No, sir. We live in a moment of a useless argument. People with that Bible pay tight by perception. Who taught Jacob Titan? Who taught Abraham? Because in the place of perception, you will know what is required without being told. Somebody say here. So ladies and gentlemen, you cannot connect to the help available until you understand perception. A woman said to her husband, I perceive this man is a man of God. Perception. I perceive that this money is not my money. The lack of perception is what killed Ananias and Sephira. God does not kill people. But when you become an insulator, you attract death instead of life. They didn't know the money was not their money. You made a vow. And God honored the property to be sold beyond your calculation. And you felt the money was too big for God. Who told you it was your money in the first place? Perception. Like many of you, sometimes you make vows. And the Lord enable you to have the vow. And then you told yourself, no, let me use this for myself. Next time I can give God his own. When you miss priority, you become vulnerable to calamity. If it is not first, it's not God. It's too big to take anything second. Seek first. It is perception that helps you understand kingdom priority. Perception. 
bus. That is why you can come to church on the midweek service. Not because there are no parties to go. The perception tells you that when you come to the house in Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess the possession. Perception tells you that how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together. It is like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron. You know that as we are gathered here, there is an atmosphere that is more real than watching me on television. Same perception. Same perception. Ladies and gentlemen, when perception is in place, you become a conductor of divinity, not an insulator. There are many of you for lack of perception. Power can never touch you. If he comes, he goes by. And you are even happy. I have never fallen before. Mumu. <laughs> Say I hear. <laughs> Say I hear. Am I blessing somebody here? Give me the next two minutes. Sit down. I want to preach like I feel like preaching. Perception is required to connect and appropriate. Time will fail me to share a testimony. I went to Medjugorje to preach for my junior brother that has one of the biggest churches there, doing his own ministry actually. And then as I slept in the hotel, I needed to catch my flight. So I woke up very early in the morning. I'm going to be talking very fast because of my time. So I woke up very early in the morning to catch my flight. And I was running out of the hotel. And then, you know, then I used to relax my hair. You know, and then they were arguing as I walked past the hotel, the waitress and cleaners. Ah, that is a music star. Ah, that is the, ah, no, he's an actor. I've seen him in Nigerian film. I was talking, they were arguing, and then one of them said, I have seen this poster. I know this face. The last thing I heard was that she was running towards my room. I was already on my way out. Two years after, when the crisis happened in Meduguri, she relocated to Bombay State and came to my church looking for the church and looking for myself. Her testimony is quite interesting. She said she had been bearing for nine years without a child. In fact, the marriage was at the verge of divorce. And she works as a cleaner in an hotel. That when they were arguing about who I was and what I looked like, she remembered she saw my poster on the street. So she ran to the room and said to herself, if this is the hotel where the man slept, I, I am believing for a child. If he's a real man of God, let something from the atmosphere enter my body. I was not there. Am I talking to somebody here? I wasn't there. She slept, slept on the bed and wrapped herself with a blanket and then she left. She said, in her testimony before my church that month people of God was the last month she saw her period she thought it was a coincidence she thought it was a coincidence she waited the first month and waited the second month and waited the third month before she told her husband and the husband being an artist was telling her if you say the man pray for you I will understand if you say the man anointed you I will... how can you sleep on the bed of a man is it that both of you slept together on the same bed how can you say you slept on the bed of a man and you are pregnant? He dragged her to the doctor. Friends, that's where both the doctor and the husband have become my spiritual children. By the atmosphere, the woman became pregnant, gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. They told that the baby is too big. She had to be operated. She told them, well, give me a little more time. I know that God who put the baby there will bring the baby out normally. I didn't conceive. Am I talking to somebody here? I didn't conceive by a medical uh, uh, procession and if God put it he will bring it they were waiting for the husband to come and sign and donate blood before the man arrived baby that they say wouldn't come up Bam! somebody say I hear they are members of my church as I speak to you today relocated from Medjugorje to Gombe perception you may not we may not be here perception allows the flow of divinity in your direction say I hear say I hear and so hear this Shapa, 19 seconds. How comes a widow among other widows was helped? How comes that a leper 
from Syria was healed and other lepers in Jerusalem were left in their leprosy. Hear this as you pray. It's important you know how to appropriate help. The reason why Naaman of all the lepers was, was healed was because, listen to this, in appropriating supernatural help, position is a requirement. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what God said about Naaman? He was a general. Naaman was a general and a Syrian. But humility distinguished him from other lepers. And I will prove to you shortly. As a general, his housemaid was able to assess him with the relevant information. A, a conquered housemaid. The girl was a Jew. Naaman was a Syrian general. Yet he could be approachable even by the house help. She went to him and said, my master, this your leprosy, where you took me from as a slave, there are prophets that will cure you of your leprosy. If Naaman was not humble, that girl wouldn't have been able to assess him. Somebody say, I hear. Oh my goodness. And many of you, your pride is your problem. In fact, in your humility, you are very proud. I might talk somebody here. It is serious. Pride is a terrible disease that those who have it think they don't have it. They are not even aware. The man could listen to a house help. There are some you men here. Even your wife cannot advise you. This is a house help advising her boss. Sir, if you could go to Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know nobody until the person touch power, money, and position. Nobody is truly humble until you have seen power, until you have taught money, until you occupy a position. All this humility you are showing is a fake humility. Poor man humility. Am I talking to somebody here? I know I'm very humble. Why wouldn't you be humble when you don't have money? Do you have money? You know me, I'm very humble. When I come to church, I just mind my own business. It's a poor man humility. When you have money, we may not even see you in church. You become the chief executive officer that has no time for God. Pastor, of course, you know, Pastor, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. You could function in certain departments in poverty, but in prosperity, ask yourself sincerely, can I see be an usher if I am a multi-millionaire? That is when you will know you have a useless pride. Take, take a test of your pride. Ask yourself, the last thing want to sing in the choir, if I have 1,000 workers in my company, can I? Can I? Because many of you, the reason why you are in the level where you are, God better leave you in this level. <laughs> Somebody say, yeah, yeah. Because if you get better than this, even God and us as pastors, we will be in trouble. Am I talking to somebody here? Look at humility. When he got the information, as a general, he had the machinery to compel the prophet to come. He chose to go. He chose to go. I am a general. But I will go. I will, I will go. The man drove. Unfortunately, where he went was not the place designated. Even when they told him, go to where the prophet is, he still left the palace and went in the direction of the prophet. Hear this. I wish you can hear me because it will help you for the rest of your life. Any humility that is not tested is pride in disguise. I thought Naaman was humble. It was good to hear a house helps advice. It was good to travel from Syria to Jerusalem in search of healing. When he met the man of God, humility was put to test. The man you drove all the while to see refused to come and see you. I cannot come out. What kind of a man of God is this? Do you know where I'm coming from? Do you understand who I am? Do you know I'm a general? Some of you at that point, your pride will start showing does the usher know who I am? Because I'm coming to sit in church quietly. Do they know who I am in this choir? Who are you, sir? At the point of test, your pride will show. It will. Can you be rebuked by a pastor and say, thank you, sir? Can you? Can you be instructed and then you take it in your pride? They said to the man, the test of humility. I'm not coming out to see you. I am praying. He said, well, that's understandable. So what do I do? Go and bat in River Jordan. Insult to injury. 
he didn't come out now that is giving me instruction there are better water where I could go and wash how can me a general go to one of the dirtiest water in Jordan when there are better he wanted to lose his school at that point and then they advised him sir if they had told you to do a harder thing wouldn't you have done it man of God I discover in God his instructions are very simple join occult you will see the simplicity of spiritual instruction Somebody say, yeah, 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 yeah. When they will tell you, donate your wife. <laughs> you need money, give us your manhood. <laughs> then you will know that his, 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 his body is light. His yoke is easy. They told him, if they have told you to do a lesser thing, wouldn't you have done it? He realized at that point, he was becoming very proud. So he accepted. Like a fool, a general went to a dirty water. As I wish they told him to bath only once. Seven times looks like punishment. <laughs> you know, when the water is smelling, you don't want to do that for a long time. He went and came out, and went and came out, and went at the seventh time. The baby of an adult was like that of a small boy. Ladies and gentlemen, humility is a spiritual positioning that allows the location of God. <laughs> If you are proud, God will be looking for you like Adam. Where are thou? You, you will not be seen. Even us as pastors will be looking for you. Where are thou? It is humility that positions you, and positioning is everything in supernatural help. You are not there. Where you are not humble. No, Pastor, I'm in church. No, sir, you are not. You are, you are, no, sir, you are not. I was in church. No! Because God resists the proud and give grace to the humble every time a man is in flagrant disobedient of instruction is pride it is pride that makes you don't want to give your tithe it's pride I'm telling it's pride you, you want to feed self it's pride it's pride everything you do outside God sometimes it's pride friends humility guarantees help humility is the key in fact humility and divinity are CMN's twins if God finds the humble man he wants to lift him Somebody said, here. Yeah. A woman came to me. I said this and then we pray. Pastor, let God take away my husband's money. I, I can't understand that kind of prayer. Pastor, let them drive him from his job. I said, madam, your children's school fees. You, you, you will deteriorate. Say, Pastor, we were better off with that money. My husband has, is not the man I used to know. He was a loving, dear, loving, dear husband. Now with money, we all, the house has become army cantonment. He's coming at the, everybody's at attention. The children are scared. I am going to hide. Hi! Pastor, let him be poor. Will God and the church benefit if you change level? Will your family be happy that you are progressing? Are you humble? Can I close now? Give me oil. Somebody say, here. I am Bushapalita Kabota. Tomorrow in the evening, I am anointing everybody for supernatural help. Say, Lord, help me now. Let me hear that amen like a believer. I want to instruct you if you can skip your breakfast tomorrow for the sake of the positioning for help I want the remaining months of this year to open up to you than you have never seen before if you come late they may not be seated tomorrow my goodness if only you can skip your breakfast tell God help me I am humble enough for help I need your help in my family I need your help in my career I need your help in my profession I need your help in my body please keep your breakfast First, and run here tomorrow as a demonstration of your humility. Let me agree with you in prayers. I pray among your mates you will stand out. Among your equals you'll be distinguished. Among your contemporaries you'll be prosperous. If you're the one I'm talking about let me hear that amen like a believer. Help. Help. Help me. Dr. Amu. 
I found the reason why of all widows, only one was helped. How many widows would have been willing to connect to help by sacrifice? God does not require a sacrifice from us. It is in our replication that we connect and appropriate. Hello, are you here? Are you here? Let me say this, it will help you because sometimes these things are so deep, they have to be broken down. You have been helped. The help is present, but you will never see it physically until you bring a sacrifice. It is in your sacrifice your time is pronounced. The Bible said in the book of Genesis, seed, time, and harvest. Your time is in your seed. God has given me a harvest. Oh yes, he finishes before he begins. Oh, that is true. He has provided. Blessed be God who has given unto us all things. Somebody say all. Somebody say all. Somebody say all. There is nothing you are looking for that has not been given. But it is one thing to be given. It's another thing to receive. Your reception is in your sacrifice. Why? Because what has been given is a spiritual product. It has to wear earthly body. And God cannot be mocked. What you sow wears the body of what is given. Okay. Hello, are they here? Everything. Abraham, you are the father of many nations. He gives it before he says it. Abraham, I will give you count the stars. Let me close with this, you will understand. Count the stars. I can't count them. That is how much your children will be like. Gobo Shapatai. Count the sand. Lord, I can't count the sand. Your children will be so many. Oh Lord, I will give you nations. How? This is how. I will give you a sacrificial baby. In the giving of Isaac will come the nation. Before God pronounces, He gives. Please get this. You don't, God has given you healing. It's just that it's not in your body. God has given you wealth. It's just that it's not in your hands. God has given you life. It's just that it's not in your lungs. Every time something leaves you materially, it allows the body, the spiritual entity to wear the earthly body. Jesus was given before the foundation of the earth. Mary's womb was the material body needed for him to wear. That is the way it works. So every time you are believing God for help and you bring your Isaac like Abraham and God takes Isaac, you know what he says? He says, now in blessing, I will bless. In prosperity, I will prosper. Every time you bring your tithe, the blessing of God is pronounced by a man. Blessed be Abraham. Because your giving allows a material body for the manifestation of the spiritual entity already given. And so therefore, help was available. All the widows were watching and looking and lacking and, 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 and perishing. How can I get a daily bread? God won't help us. The famine is serious. Three and a half years, we are dying of famine. Where is God? God said the help is available. I just need a widow that can sow her last and carry it. Help was available. And so, God said to Elijah, there is a widow that I can see the willingness to sow. Let what is available come to our house. And the only widow that saw abundance was the only widow willing to give. There is a gentleman, there are dimensions of help you will never see until you suspend your senses and your wisdom and apply the wisdom of God. There is a gentleman, God could have by one swave of a hand saved all of us, but our salvation would have been contended by the devil. So what God did is to give his only begotten son as a sacrifice and the harvest is Paul Odola and yourself. of a seed fall to the ground and dies it will be alone but when it dies what it comes with we can't tell where it's coming with it but that is the mystery of sacrifice that is the mystery of sowing that is the mystery of giving 
I close with this. The governor of my state right now is of a party that does not exist in the north. The north was determined to do away with the previous party because it was a Christian party. And then my governor, being a Muslim, was of a PDP. Sorry that I'm mentioning Nigerian politics. And so, of all the northeastern states, the APC, which is the current government, was sweeping the northeastern state because they were Muslims and they had tilted towards ethnicity and religion. So my governor, who wanted to retain his seat for a second term, decided to employ spiritual powers. He went to Niger, it's, it's open secret, so I'm saying it, and imported marabouts, 120 of them, with their encampments and big, big, uh, whatever they call it, uh, whatever. And then, and then he was chanting, his driver is my son. So the driver told him, sir, he said yes. If you can see my pastor, I think this battle will be won. And he said, no, I don't want to see your pastor. I have 120 marabouts. And then my, 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 my son said to him, my pastor may not be a marabout, but if you add one on the 120, it won't be too much. Please see my pastor. We need to retain this seat. The man was hesitant. Unfortunately for me, I was on television. I normally go for prime time before our main news. And then he saw the name. He said, ah, this is the man that my son was talking to. My driver was telling me. Then for the first time, he listened to my preaching a little. He said, no, somebody that can talk like this can pray well. <laughs> somebody said, yeah. Then he told the driver, how do we see your pastor? I want to see him in the night. I don't want to be known that I'm seeing a pastor. And so they told me, they said, the governor wants to see you by 2 a.m. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how I stood waiting for them to come. In the midnight, he came in a disguised car and said, Pastor, I want to retain this seat. I'm going to talk to somebody here. And then he said to me, this is what he said. I don't know what that means, but I'm understanding it. He said, spiritual favor is for the highest bidder. I don't know what he meant by that, but I'm getting to understand it. And then he said to me, what do I need to do? I want to retain. And as I stood there, the man standing before me, the Holy Ghost said to me, let him get the sand of all the local governments of my state. Let me put him on it and anoint his feet. He will get it. And then he said to me, for each of the local government, I want to sow a seed that the people will come as my harvest. Unbeliever talking. And ladies and gentlemen, we have about 13 local governments in Nigeria. And then for each of the local governments, he gave one one million each. One one million. And then on that day, he gave it and stood on it. I am not this fit. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this to you. I have never been under pressure like that election. I have collected 30 million. <laughs> and God has to show up. The election was tilting towards opposition. And they said to him, sir, we are losing. He said, we can't lose. What I did will give me the harvest of victory. And ladies and gentlemen, as it was, as if he was going to lose, as if it was going to lose, mysteriously, the governor won the election by 113 votes. How much did he give? 13 million. He won the election by what? Just hundred and that narrow victory, and then he said, This victory is a harvest of his seed. Today, I'm the only pastor that see him without protocol. I call him like a friend. He invites me sometime for dinner, and he said, to Me, Pastor, is there any seed to sow? <laughs> Somebody said, Here, 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 here. Friends, if you need the harvest, you don't have a time until seed goes down. Stand on your feet. Bologna, Bologna, Bologna. No, <laughs> oh, hallelujah. No one like you. Lift up your hands. Bologna, no one else but you. Lift up your hands. Bologna. Oh, no, 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 no,
It's better than life itself. Say, I was one God, but now I am found. Hey, oh, for God, yeah, for God, yeah, hey, for God, yeah, 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 for God, Jesus heals. No one can deliver you like Jesus delivers. Nobody can save you like Jesus says. There is no one like him. I need you to pray for help. My brother, you need help. Help! Look at the dimension of your prayers and I'm done. You will pray for help in your affliction. There are three areas in man where help is needed. You need help against affliction. You need help against aggression. You need help for provision. Oh yes. These are the three areas, Lord. You need help. There are some of you, if God does not help you, this affliction, it will take you to early grief. I know what I'm talking about. You need help against that affliction. Doctors have tried. Injections have tried. Tablets have tried. You need help in that affliction. Number two, you need help from aggression. Friends, there are enemies that are stronger than you. If God does not help you, they will make life miserable. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you are coming from families where covens of witches and wizards are everywhere. You are coming from hostile offices. Man! The heart of man, the wickedness of man is extended in your direction. After today, God will kill them for your sake. I don't like your amen. God will kill them for your sake. I don't like your amen. God will kill them for your sake. Number three. This is the one I love. Sir, if you think your provision is enough, you don't have his vision. If you think. How much do you have? What is this handkerchief for me? It's dry. It's giving me dust. How much do you have? When you are doing a hand to mouth, how much do you have? If your provision is sufficient and you say you don't need God, you don't have this vision. God does not give you provision for your daily bread. He gives you provision to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to sponsor his work, and live for posterity and asset and legacy. I want to pray for you. After today, you will see the help of God. Are you ready for that prayer? So ladies and gentlemen, look for where you belong. In some cases, you belong everywhere. Help from affliction. Help from aggression. Help for provision. Lift up your hands. You will pray this prayer in one minute and I'm down. Tomorrow in the night, I'm touching everybody. I don't care the sickness. I promise you by God, you will be healed for life. Am I talking to somebody here? This Easter will be an Easter you will not forget for the rest of your life. If you are the one I'm talking about, let me hear that. Amen. Like a thunder. Yeah. Lift up your hands. Say, Oh God. Oh God. Help 
me. Help me. Now. Now. I don't like the way you are saying it. You are too proud. Lift up your two hands. Repeat after me. Say, oh God. Oh God. Say it again. Say, oh God. Oh God. Help me. Help me. Now. Now. Are you ready for the last time? Say, oh God. Oh God. I receive your help. I receive your help. Now. 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 Clap your hands and pray that prayer. Patobri katoba, lori patobri katoa, shatuka patoba, lori patoba, shapatoba. Help against the flesh, help against the flesh, help against the flesh. Lori patoba, anything that has afflicted us, we need help. Let it be divine help. In the name of Jesus, we are appropriate. We are appropriate. Divine help against the flesh. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands. If your amen is the loudest, take a miracle now. If your amen is the loudest, take a miracle now. If your amen is the loudest, take a miracle now. Stretch your hand in my direction if you can. Your two hands like that. Stretch it in my direction. The Lord is a present help in times of trouble. I speak to every man and woman, every boy and girl, on that the sound of my voice. Any area and any dimension in any ramification where you need the help of God, I stand in agreement with your pastor and I declare receive them now! In every affliction I declare, receive help now! Against that aggression I declare, receive help now! That provision you need to interpret intentions, that provision you need to interpret your vision, that provision you need to bring expectation to pass. At this point in time, stretch your hands. Kabrato shapai me ento boloko barata. That wealth you intend to touch, so that your destiny can find the expression. I stand here today. If I be a man of God, I declare your hand will not be empty. Yobo shapa, you didn't hear me. Your hand will not be empty. Your hands will not be empty. Your hands will not be empty. Let me hear that amen eight times. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, for the hands and give him thanks I want to anoint every man I thank you for help if the help is present I connect to that very present help